Hello YouTube, this is that BMX guy and this is a video on slightly upgrading your SRF3 hub. Um, so normally the SRF3 comes with this three prong driver that we'd use coaster brake cogs. A similar cog that we look for is like one of these. Now normally they're one half. Like this guy is a one half by one eighth, 18 tooth, and it just goes right on there. Now the problem I always found with coaster brakes was that these little tabs would want to tear off the cog after a while if you put too much force on the hub, forward or reverse or braking. With the flat land situation, when you try to land a trick and you stomp on the pedal too hard, these will start tearing through and then they just start spinning. And that's the whole reason why a lot of people are having these cogs loaded on the drivers, on the free coasters anyway. But this is no real different. It can probably still have that issue. So there's an upgrade. We call it, or it's called um, the Brompton BWR driver. It is a nine spline driver. That's difficult to get out with one hand. But it has the normal hyperglide splines. So you can use a hyperglide cog. So this will just install right where this driver is. If you look at my videos, there's ways to get the driver out here. I'd recommend just taking the whole thing apart and then pulling it in that way because it's just very difficult to get these paws past this bearing and in there without really messing up stuff because the clutch has to go through here and you know you gotta get the spring through here but it's just easier just to take the whole hub apart and then just start off by taking this side off and taking that off and then putting this in this place now what's nice is that it actually comes with new paws and it comes with another actuator plate it's not necessarily grease from the factory you have to grease it if you want to grease it if you want to use oil it's a little bit easier to use oil because there's nothing really in it what's nice is that see this is meant for a six speed setup so you can actually put two cogs on here with hyperglide spacing or eight speed spacing or whatever a derailleur spacing needs to be the only real issue is that you got to space it out perfectly so you can still use a lock ring, you know, a spring load circlip lock ring. But other than that, it's a nice upgrade. Um, I haven't used it yet, and I bought it for this because, you know, I was just going to try it because I want to use three 30 second cogs. And most of the coaster brake cogs that you buy are one eighth, at least still lately. Stormy Archer finally actually makes a 332nd cog that I put on this coaster brake. And they last a pretty long time too, so the only disadvantage is that it still has a three prong that might break. But the, the teeth, you know, you can use any chain. So yeah. I think normally we'd have a one eighth cog like on this one. But yeah, I have the 332nd on the AM. But well, the SRF3, that's the one main upgrade you could do to get it to be a little bit better. This is also a 32 hole hub, which is pretty nice to have those two different hole patterns, 32 and 36. Because you might just want to relace your rim that you have on your bike. And most of the larger wheels, the 700s, are 32. But the BMX wheels are always like 36, so it's actually easier to, to get this hub and run it. Anyway, before I'm really done with the video, what's another upgrade that I didn't think about? Well, sometimes you get this shifter. Now, there's nothing really wrong with the trigger shifter. It's just like, you know, it's kind of clumsy. It's a very effective shifter for this hub because you know it, it's going to work. And if you put it somewhere, you know it'll be a positive shift. Sometimes these hubs 
like the other hub, it came with some rapid fire thing, but rapid fire just seems to be a waste of time with three years. So there's this shifter right here, it's called the S30. It's a pretty nice film shifter. And you can probably mount it to say a Paul Fumby, that's for Shimano. And make it so you can just pull it off your bike, along with the wheel if you don't like it. But when you need it, you can put it back on, along with this nice shifter. And the shifter you can just mount it right next to your lever, or you can maybe mount it to your seat post if you have a bigger clamp for it and um or just mount it to the other side wherever you want to mount it it's actually a little bit nicer it's a positive shift each click it only clicks three times normally but yeah it's nice and tight too but like I said the Paul Fummy you can mount this onto it I believe it'll fit on the square surface of a Shimano um, down to your shifter. Now, you can, actually, you can put the shifter on a Shimano down to your shifter frame. If you really wanted to use it on, you know, a frame that has those. Anyway, that's the other upgrade that you can put on that thing. There's not many other upgrades I can think of. I mean, what's nice is that with this SR3, it's still a normal shell, but this AM, it's inside this AW. I can actually put this inside of this and it will work perfectly fine. It'll be a little bit noisy, like in case of this AM, it's kind of like noticeably moving around, even in this, where there's a bushing on this end bell. There's no bushing here for it, but what'd be, what's nice is, um, the low gear ring, even though there's only 10 splines on this ratchet, the drive side, there's 20 inside this guy. <clears throat> and you can actually put, well, let's say it's just an AW, and the AW just seems to be a little bit, I don't know, more efficient than the SR3. Like, it just seems like it's freer. I always found it to be freer. But anyway, you'd have 20 points of engagement on the non-drive side in this shell and you can even use a ball ring that it's called the HSA 121 that's somewhere in my pile of other stuff here so I don't even know where it is you gotta take my word for it I guess the HSA 121 is a newer ball ring that kind of uses everything that you see here this plastic ring and it kind of uses the bearing race. Um, and what it does is it gives it 20 points of engagement on the drive side and the non-drive side. If you use it in the shell, the HSA 121 will still fit on this clutch and inside this hub. It just won't have a way to really hold oil or bearings in with a nice pressed on shield. Uh, yeah, there's uh, any upgrades I can think of. Other than maybe you can mix and match any AW, the S5 will even go on the side of this shell. You just gotta figure out a way to get shifters for both sides. Just like I have to. I, I still can't find any real progress on the S5 to use with anything. Is that just a you know, extension of four and a half minutes. Anyway, that's this is that BMX guy and thanks for watching.